Hello everyone. Today I want to share another card using the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. I did a series of cards just the other day and the sunflower stamp was still on my desk and I thought that I would do a watercolor card because I love to watercolor. So I did this one with the uh, yellow traditional color for the sunflower and I chose crushed curry as my um, color. And then I thought when I was done with this one, I liked how it turned out, but then I thought what would it look like in kind of a non-realistic color. So I opted here for, this is a combination actually, of Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. And then I've put it on a base of the um, Purple Posy. So it's a purple version of this card and I thought it was really fun in this color actually. So here are two versions of the same card. A little bit different on the accents here. I've got some sequins and here I've got this new um, gold ribbon. It's kind of like a twine but gold. <laughs> and then I've got these little gold little metallic accents here. So anyway, they're the same exact card, just changed up the papers a little bit. And I thought um, we would put one together and we're going to do the purple version because I think it's really fun. Oh, also I want to point out this paper that's behind the um, flowers. As you can see, this is like a planks of wood and I really like that. And that's been featured in several of our papers in the past and it's been wildly popular so they keep kind of trying to bring a plank in somehow, like right now we have it in our pressed flowers designer series paper, pressed petals or pressed flowers, I'm not sure what the exact name of that one is. It's a retiring paper so you should grab it if you can. And this is a new paper coming in. So here it's got the planks but then here it's got some tiles. So it's really fun. I'm going to show you the paper really quick. It's called In Good Taste and it's a thicker pack than usual. Normally you get 12 sheets and this one has 24 so it's a little more expensive but it's going to be worth it because these are all pages that you're going to be using constantly. You've got the wooden planks and there's a few different varieties of wooden planks. And then there's this burlap. This burlap piece is really nice. It's kind of a dark burlap. And on the back of that we've got this, um, looks like tiles, some brickwork, but it, I think it's more tile than brick. I should see what's on the back of this one. Well, here we've got like a bathroom tile, a little uh, tile here that is fun and, and kind of more modern and clean looking as opposed to rustic. So then we've got a darker wooden plank, a little cleaner, this is more rustic. Okay, and then we've got a lighter wooden plank. So like I'm saying, there's a lot of wood textures in here, and that's okay because you're going to use them. Oh, I forgot to show you the back. So on the back of the dark, oh, we've got like a canvas. Maybe it's been gessoed, and it's got um, really interesting textures on here. So that's fun. And then on the back of this medium wood plank, we've got, oh, so this is the one I used on my card front, that really skinny tile. And here we've got another, this like maybe this little fancy tile. And then here just a basic gray. And that, that basic gray is going to take you far too. You've got um, just it's so nice to have these kind of background materials that are, go from rustic to modern. Here's a really cute rug. Look at that. That'll make a great background. And then here, this is fun. This looks like a close up of maybe a chenille blanket or something kind of soft looking. And that would be pretty on a real pretty floral card. You can even use this one. It's real cute on a little baby card too, like a soft little blankie. And then here, look at this really modern tile. Or it could be retro too. And then here we've got some more gesso and uh, or plaster. I'm not quite sure what it is, but um, some kind of plaster look. Or really fun. And here we've got a plaster with a blue background and another style of tile more wood and here's another style of blanket and here's another looks like maybe a rug a weave and here's another small little tile and this one has like blue tones this is really fun and then here's kind of a faded bleached woody little pale wood with another type of tile so this is a really um, interesting pack. It's called In Good Taste, and I think that you're going to get a lot of mileage out of that paper. Okay, that was a lot about that paper. Sorry, I just really like it, and I thought maybe <laughs> you'd want to see all the different patterns. But here's that tile pattern I used on this one, and we're going to focus on that 
and here's some planks on this more rustic style. So you've got kind of a more modern and a little bit more rustic. Okay, now to stamp my sunflower, it's a large image and I want to get a good clean image, so I'm going to use my stamp apparatus. And I don't always get it out when I stamp, but when it's a large image like this and I'm stamping on watercolor paper, you know, watercolor paper has its own challenges. It's got ridges and bumps to it. It's not super smooth like our nice whisper white. So just making sure the ink gets a good clean coverage the first time is really important because how are you going to line that up? So out comes the stamp apparatus. So I'm going to make sure that it fits. I'm going to keep it closer away from the edge. And I need both of these. I need my little one and my big one for this card, so maybe I can do them both at the same time. There we go. And then on this card I didn't add any of the additional little leaves. On the yellow one I did, I wanted to break up some of that yellow because I've got yellow on the flower and the same exact yellow on my sentiment and the base, so I wanted to add extra green leaves to just to break up the yellow. On this one though, I thought I was pretty good. I didn't really think it was needed, so I didn't add any more. So I'm going to put just these two. So I've placed them where I want them on the watercolor paper. I'm going to press down and it'll pick up those stamps. And now ah, I'm going to ink up my stamps. So I am inking up with Stazon because I am watercoloring. So I want to make sure that I'm using a waterproof ink. see how we do. Alright, my little guy looks pretty good, but this one really missed a lot of spots. Could be that my ink pad needs some more ink. got nice good deep coverage so let's go ahead and take that off okay so I think I mentioned the colors that I chose I went with Highland Heather and gorgeous grape and then for the center of my sunflower normally I would choose a brown and golden colors maybe some oranges rust but this time I went with gray so this is um, smoky slate And then on my leaf, I went with um, Old Olive. All right, so this is our aqua painter. This is the current aqua painter that's still in the 2019-2020 annual catalog. But I will say that in the next annual catalog that comes out June 3rd, the aqua painters change and there's a three pack and one of them is a flat wash. So I'm really excited to get those. Those are going to be on my first order um, when I can place an order for everything. Right now we were only allowed to place an order for selected items pre-order. And um, so watch for new aqua painters. They're really exciting. I'm excited to get my hands on them. Um, but with an aqua painter you just kind of put some water in the barrel and squeeze lightly until your brush starts to be wet. I like to keep my stamp and scrub next. You can use a paper towel too, but I like the stamp and scrub. I feel like it's, you know, not wasting paper towels and I can kind of wipe my brush on it in between colors and clean it off a little bit. So I'm going to start with the center of the flower. And this is smoky slate. I usually put ink in the well of my ink pad in the lid. If you don't like to do that, you can drop some ink. I Every time I buy an ink pad, I always buy a re-inker every time. So then I can add some ink to my lid. Um, if you don't want to do that, another way to make a nice palette is to just put your block right into the ink and then you can paint right off of this. Or you can dip it on your lid. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to do that. Oops, I meant to do it off of there. So I'm giving a nice thin wash of the gray over the center of the flower. It's really light. Mm -hmm. 
Now, um, depending upon how much water you get on there, it could dry pretty quickly or it can stay wet. When it's still just the slightest bit damp, I'm going to go back to this one, pick up more of this ink and just kind of dab it in areas kind of more heavily and it's still wet so it's going to bleed out a little bit and just going to tap it and let it bleed out um, into the lighter areas and I'm just kind of going around the edges and that way it's not so flat if you just leave it as a wash. This way you've got some dark and light. And then I'm going to do a little bit in the center. Oops, that's really heavy. Right there in the center. A little heavier than I meant to go. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to dab some little color close to the edge. And then again a little bit in the center. Just kind of up and down motions and it's going to bleed out a little bit. It's still, it's pretty dry actually so it's not bleeding as much. And if you want to wet it a little bit so you do get more um, bleed of color, you can do that. I like the darks and lights. So I'm not going to go too crazy. Okay. I think that is good. Alright, so if you're done with the color, you can just take your block and wipe it off on a Stampin' Scrub. And now you can use that same one again. I think I'm going to choose a smaller block, although I'm going with the purple, so maybe the bigger one is better. A lot more color needed. So then to rinse your brush, you're just going to squeeze it and let that water run through the tip and just kind of lightly go back and forth. You don't want to scrub, you don't want to ruin your tip, but go back and forth and clean that brush off. And you can check it to see if you've cleaned it good. Um, I might want to do a little more. There. And now I'm going to move on. Now I'm going to move on to the green of this leaf so that I have a little bit of space between my um, water. I don't want to go too close to this yet just in case it's still wet. So I'm going to move on to the old olive. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a wash with the whole up over the whole thing, kind of getting that old olive everywhere. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to pick up a deeper amount of that color and go down the vein. And it's going to bleed out a little bit because it's still a little bit wet, which is nice. It's going to kind of bleed out, but it's not going to make the whole thing a uniform color. And then I'm going to kind of go along the um, area of the petals, just kind of maybe they're making a shadow. And if you need to add some flicking out, you can do that. But then I've got some darks and lights, which is what I'm looking for. Same thing over here. I'm going to go down that vein, darken it, and under the petals. and rinse my brush. I'm going to flip this over and work on the big one so that I'm away from the green while it dries. And I'm going to start with Highland Heather, which is the lighter color. As you can see, I paint from here all the time, but I'm going to show how to not do that if you don't have a reinker. I don't want you to think you can only paint if you have a reinker and you could put drops of ink in your lid. You can paint right off a block. All right, so I'm going to do a couple petals and then I'm going to fast forward so that it's faster for you and the viewer so you don't have to watch me do each one. But I'm going to do the same thing as I've been doing. I'm going to go with a light, oh, that's kind of dark. I meant to make it lighter. Light wash. I'm going to add a little more water to lighten that up. Spread that out a little bit. So it's lighter. So I'm doing a light wash of Highland Heather over the entire flower. And then I'm going to go back in and add highlights with Gorgeous Grape. And you can even, if you want more tones, you can add another layer. Once it's dry, if I added another layer of Highland Heather on top, that would give me some color variation too. So you don't have to use two different colors. You can just add layers of color on top of each other to get darks and lights as well. But since I happen to have Gorgeous Grape right here, I'm going to use it. And I think that it's a very rich color. I really like it, especially next to Highland Heather. So there's my light wash and I'm going to speed up from here on out until I go with the dark color. All 
right, I've got a lot of ink in this one. I'm just going to use it. Okay, so this is still a little bit damp, but I'm going to go ahead and start. I can't remember what side I started on. It's a little bit damp, but I think it's still okay to go right ahead. You can wait for it to completely dry, but I think um, if it's a little bit damp, that can be fun too. You can add some blends a little easier. Now it kind of depends on what kind of a look you're going for. I was really looking for high contrast between light and dark. And so I did not blend out my lines very much at all, actually. So it depends on what you're going for. If you want that kind of subtle variation of color, then when it's still more wet, that might be better. But I like the high contrast on this kind of more funky colored sunflower. So I am not blending out. I'm just kind of adding highlights in gorgeous grapes and leaving the tips um, in the Highland Heather showing through. All right, I hope this makes sense. So I'm going and I'm kind of using the area where they put in, the, the artist of this stamp, put in these lines to kind of help us know where to highlight our petals. And then also underneath where one petal overlaps another, there's a lot darker lines too. So it's kind of like a shadow. So those are the areas that I'm making dark. And again, you can decide how you like to paint. I am going for high contrast here. So that's what I'm doing. And you can do subtle areas of shadow, however you want. Um, I'll speed up now. Okay, I'm all done here. I want to maybe take a look at where my petals touch the gray center because I have some white spots showing. Just cover those in a little bit. Okay, there, I'm done painting. So now I'm gonna use the dyes to cut them out. The dies are really great. Um, I love I love all of them and uh, we're just using these two but uh, there's some really great ones that have extra details and things too so it's a really fun die collection. I will be right back. Okay so I've got them cut out and here I did something a little different. On this card, I didn't mind that there was an edge around the image, and normally I don't mind that there's an edge around the image, um, but on this one, for some reason, I did. I think it's because um, watercolor paper is slightly ivory, and although it doesn't look bad against the tiles, I really was trying to go for a more modern look, and I thought the ivory wasn't quite right, although these tiles are not pure white. They're gray and earthy, and so ivory would have been just fine. But um, Anyway, it's not what I was going for, so I opted to go around the images with the black and I kind of got rid of that um, ivory and I think it really makes the flowers pop out. I, I think it's kind of fun and different, so that's how I got this look to it. And I just grabbed a stamp and write marker if, um, no, I grabbed my blends. You can use a stamp and write marker, but I like the blends for this and um, I just went around the image, so I'll show you how that works. And I'll speed up this image or this video during this after I do a little bit. So see, I just kind of went around the whole thing with the, my um, Stampin' Blends basic black marker. It's fun because this actually covers up any boo-boos you might have made too, like maybe your paint went outside the edge. <laughs> All 
Okay, I've cut out my sunflowers and drawn around the edge. All that's left is putting the card together. So I've got my card base, it's Purple Posy, and then I've got a matte piece in uh, Basic Gray. And then I've got my tile, and that is cut at um, three and three quarters by five. The mat was five and a quarter by four. Okay, and then I've got another piece of purple posy, and this one is one and a half inches wide, and then it's three and three quarters inches uh, long. And I'm going to use this for my sentiment, but I'm going to stamp that first just in case I make a mistake. And I am doing some thank yous because I am hoping when the new Kello goes live that I will have some uh, orders. <laughs> so I'm going to use some thank you cards, and so I have to make a lot of thank you cards right now. I'm preparing, and here we go. So I'm going to slightly go to the lower end of this because I want to use the top for the flowers to hang over. On the yellow one, it was a little bit harder because um, Let's Celebrate You has a Y that dips low plus the L and the B that go high. So it used more of that space. It is the same size, but um, as you can see, it's a little higher, which meant that I couldn't have the sunflowers hang over as much, but it still uh, worked just fine. Then I decided to put it, it's about an inch off the bottom, a little bit higher maybe. It kind of depends on your sunflower. You want to make sure that your sunflower clears. And so. Okay, now I placed my sunflower. Actually, there is some strategy here. I wanted to cover up this entire line. I like when a line where cardstock meets has like ribbon or trim something and to avoid needing that I wanted my sunflower to be that edge so I wanted to place it so that the sunflower covers that line completely. <laughs> now on the green one or on the yellow one the uh, leaf did that for me so the leaves color cover that line. I don't know why I like it that way but I do. I'm just <laughs> giving you the method to my madness here. Where did I want that? I like these things kind of by the words, I think. I like the way the petals kind of flick up. So I think that is going to go down right there. And then this one, you can decide do you want your green going this way? Do you want it over the top of the purple? I decided I wanted it over the top of the purple just to kind of break up some of the purple. And I put the um, dimensionals towards the side, and then I'm actually going to add a little bit of glue to this side that's going to hang over because then I want some adhesive to touch it. There. And there is your card. Now I wanted to add a little bit of bling, and um, there we go. So I went with some adhesive back sequins that I have laying around. I have a ton of these in a little bag. Some of them are still in the catalog. Some of them um, are retiring soon, like these little cute ones here uh, with the flowers. I think these are retiring. They're not going to be in the next catalog. There's going to be some other sequins in the next catalog, so there are going to be sequins. But check out the Last Chance products. If you're watching this before June 3rd, check out the Last Chance products at the store, the web store, you can get to the web store. Um, I have a link right here on the video off to the side. You can click on the little S. I think it's for my Stampin' Up! store. And you can check out the last chance products and um, see what is, what's available. And I think there's some good selections here. And I really like these little sequins. There's some that are um, regular sequin shape and then there's some cute ones with flowers. And that's a fun pack. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. And you know what? In the next catalog there's no baker's twine. I have to get that out there because I'm a little distressed. 
I love Baker's Twine. Um, so I um, grabbed grabbed some of that. And there's none of it on sale. I mean, there is some still available. It's not at sale prices, though. Um, they're just regular prices. There might be some. Tons of accessories are on sale, so check those out. But the Baker's Twine, I didn't see any on sale. But I still grabbed some because it's great to have around. And um, you're going to want to grab some Baker's Twine. The Country Club Baker's Twine pack has four colors. Grab that. Okay, so I've added some little sequin just for some sparkle. And I think that's really fun. And then I've got this one here. I added some of the twine behind. So there is my Celebrate Sunflowers card. I hope you like it. If there's some products that you're really wishing you could order right now, like this Celebrate Sunflowers stamp and die set, um, there is a way to do it. If you join right now, you can add these to your starter kit. And the starter kit is a great deal. It's $99 for any $125 worth of product that's available to demonstrators. So that includes this. And um, there's no obligation past that. You're going to... Um, you're going to be a, a demonstrator. You get three months to decide if you want to stay. There's no obligation. So if you place orders and you stay, that's great. And if you decide that that was all you wanted and that's it, um, I'd hate for, to see you go, but I understand. <laughs> so um, sometimes things just aren't in the cards. But look at my join um, tab at my blog and read about it because it's actually a really great deal. And if you have any questions, contact me. And I hope you liked my video. I hope you subscribe and come back again. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.